All right, so this is going to be a quick look at using displacements uh, to create uh, a, a surface. So in this case, it's going to be something like the, the threads on a, on a screw, something that would screw in. Uh, so I have this image here that's just uh, a couple of soft gradient lines and then a couple that end top and bottom. Um, could go through the time of tapering these a bit, but uh, you know, you'll get the idea here. So let um, me just go ahead and save this. Um, Let's see, let's just make it a JPEG, and I'll put that, we'll call this threads. And okay, so let's hop over here. And you can see here is uh, kind of the basic uh, mesh. Oops. Here's the basic mesh. Um, and I actually want to subdivide this. So uh, shift tab will put me into P subs. Uh, but the problem that I get here is just kind of the typical problem of needing more edges. So um, I'll just select a couple of polygons. Option C to go to the loop slice tool, make sure that I have uh, symmetry turned on and the count set to two. And that's just gonna give me uh, a couple of extra edges to add some rigidity here. And then also on the top and bottom, I'm just gonna select those and bevel them inwards just a little bit. Okay, so this is gonna be where I'm gonna add the, uh, the, the threading on the screw here. So let's go up here now to the, uh, to the UV and let's check out the UV here. So this UV is not going to be really usable for what we're doing here. And oops, I accidentally added a few extra edges here. So go ahead and delete some of those. We don't need that many. Uh, that is more like it. Do the same on the bottom here. Sorry about that. <clears throat> there we go. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is these, I want to retain some of these tops and bottoms on the UV, but I want them to just be in kind of the black space uh, so that they're not going to be affected by anything. So I'm just gonna scale those down and move them up into the corner there. And then I'm gonna grab this entire guy and just choose fit, po fit UVs, turn off key proportion and click okay. That way I get it all filling up the whole UV space. Um, <clears throat> that will make it better here for my uh, for adding on my uh, my displacement. So press M to add a new image and we'll call this, or a new uh, texture rather, we'll call it thread. And let's go over to the shader tree and we'll open up that thread and then I'm gonna go grab that image. So let's go over to the desktop. If I can find the desktop, there it is. There we go, so, um, so there's my threads image. I'm just gonna drop that in there and you can see it drops into the UV space and also drops on here. Now, in a lot of cases, this might be fine actually because it's hard to tell if these are actually uh, tilting or not. We'll look at how to edit this here in a second as well, but uh, yeah, so there you go, you get the general idea. Uh, now, if I change this from diffuse color to down in surface shading, I'll go to displacement. You can see it's always gonna look a little rough here in, uh, in the real-time viewport, but uh, if I go to the render tab, We'll see what this is actually gonna look like. And that's just a, also just a preview on the, on the displacement. Here's what it's gonna look like actually rendered. So let's just turn on a little bit better lighting here for a moment, oops. Uh, turn that from zero and turn on indirect illumination. And uh, I'm just gonna balance out my indirect and direct lighting just so we can see this a little better. Okay, so that's that's the general idea here. Now, what I would really recommend is if you're using something like this where you have um, an image that's just black and white, uh, it's a good idea to just leave your default values. If, however, you wanna have something like where the threading might indent, um, well, it would take a little bit more complex image map, first of all, you would want some, uh, you would want maybe black areas here, and then the outside area would be like a 50% gray and this would be like the effect of using um, the overlay mode in Photoshop where gray, 50% gray is neutral and doesn't affect the image. Anything brighter than that will lighten, anything darker will darken. Um, but just for doing something simple like this, this will work, okay? So uh, the only thing that, that we need to do then is make a little adjustment. And you could do this in Photoshop or here in 3D. Um, if you're gonna do this in Photoshop, I actually don't have Photoshop on this computer. Um, but you could take this entire image and then use the perspective or uh, shear tool or something and kind of angle this a little bit. We can actually do the same thing here with the UVs. So I'm just gonna select this entire thing here and I'm gonna turn on a linear fall off and turn on my move tool. Oops, let's get my linear fall off working here. And I just wanted to go vertically up the entire way here. So I um, just want to kind of snap that right to, 
or sorry, I'm going the wrong way. I want to go left to right. Um, and now if I use the move tool, you can see it's going to move up just part of this. Okay, so let's look here. This is actually divided into, this is a 1024 by 1024 image, and it's divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, edges here. So it's actually eight divisions. So I would actually want to go one eighth of the way up if I want this to tile correctly. So um, let's see here. I can do this. I can just use my V here. I can do one divided by eight, and it will do the math for me because I'm math challenged at the moment. My head's not working. Uh, and that ought to work. And then what I can do here is I can just take, oops, um, I can turn off my fall off and just move the entire thing. Wow back down to kind of center it up. And now these uh, these are actually going to tile into each other. If I hit it right, I might have gone, yeah, I didn't go quite far enough. So here, let's undo, let's go back. And again, we use the move tool and let's just pull this guy straight out here. And, oops, looks like we're going the other way this time. That's all right. And if I look at this here, I'm actually going to turn this at the, for the moment. I'm just going to turn it back into diffuse color so I can see what's going on a little bit better. So you can see here I'm getting this kind of swimming. And there we go. I just want to look for where the threads interlock. Well, actually, no, that's, that's, the, that's the default. Here we go. I want to look for them to lock on the next level. OK, there we go. So now I can see that's going straight across. Uh, drop my fall off again, and now I'm just going to grab the entire thing, like I said, and move it down. And that's going to make the threads move to kind of a more middle section. And now you can see they're actually looping around. But again, you could do this backwards in Photoshop just by um, tilting it, and you just want to make sure that you're going to line up left to right so that if those wrap around, uh, they're going to meet each other. So now let's deselect that. It's a hair off right here. There's a tiny bit of a, of a black bit. So what I could do here. You can always fudge your UVs to fix things like that. So if I just move this UV edge in just a tiny, tiny bit, see that blackness goes away. Eh, that was too far. Anyways, you get the idea. We can just do that. Uh, now I'm going to change this back to displacement. And let's go over to render. And there you can see now this is looking actually like real threads here. And there's the only spot where we have a little bit of an issue and we have a little bit of a seam. So that can be a tiny problem. You can go back, like I said, you can edit your UVs um, little bits at a time to fix very minor problems like that. We should get pretty close. Um, yeah. And then the other thing that you can do is you actually could go in and 3D paint on those. But usually what you're going to do for something like this is you're going to get it really close. And then you're just going to hide that and put it in the background so it's not as visible. And you're set. So the last thing, if you want to adjust this uh, height-wise, would be to go to your actual base material. And you can see my displacement distance is 20 millimeters. So if I want this to be a little deeper, let's say we take it up to 40 millimeters, it's going to double the depth of that. And, uh, and from there, you're, you're good to go. Uh, I'm just going to real quickly set this down to something um, more metallic. So let's go match my specular and in this case, I'm going to turn on a little blurry reflections. I think it will look nicer. And then I've got something a little bit more metallic. I'm going to deepen the, the color a little bit, though, so it's a little bit more uh, gunmetal-ish. Anyway, there you go. So that's, that's, the, that's the general idea. You can do that with lots of different things. Um, this is way quicker than going and actually modeling screw threads. Trust me, I've done it. Um, and it's just kind of a little bit of a drawn out procedure. This is much quicker, and you can go in and make adjustments um, very easily. Uh, you can change the position of the screws, again, just by going into your UV map. Oops, get to my polygons here. And I can just move this, and it will adjust where the screw threads are. You can get a quick preview of it here. You can turn on RayGL to get a preview, or you can just go ahead over and uh, fire off a final render. And, uh, and see what it's going to look like finished. Okay, So there you go, using displacements to create screw threads. Hope that was helpful. Talk to you later. Bye for now.